Hello there guys and welcome, welcome back to the channel. Now finally the final exploration guide for Act 8.2 and that is 8.26. So obviously in this video I'm not going to be talking too much about the final boss because I did upload a separate guide that is going to be in this exact same playlist. So check that out about intricacies about dealing with behemoth boss. But uh, obviously as always I will show you guys the small write-up so you can take screenshot or you just come here for it i don't know uh, i will bring this back before i finish the video so you you know you don't have to pause right now you will see this same write-up yet again up on the screen but it basically is just a cliff note version of what i am going to be discussing in today's video which is the best path counters you know the easiest options for them so and so forth so let's start just from the left side and then move all the way across. So first things first, we have in weapon uh, Inferno X Gene. The entire point here is that you do not want to hit opponent's block or let them await any of your hits. Uh, because then you will get incinerated. Obviously you can get around it with incinerate immune champions, but it is not really needed. The most important thing here is to use a buff heavy champion in order to make your incinerate more potent and the entire idea of this path is you just block bait uh openings push opponents to a special attack then evade a hit of opponent's special attack and then put yourself in a corner and let them dash in at you and dex once and when you do that you will capture their weapon so you need to push them to a special attack carefully without hitting their block and uh, you know playing around the tenacity node and then put yourself in the corner and let them dash in at you and await one of their hits or bait out a heavy attack from them and await the heavy attack if you can do that now after that you just want to take their hits in a block and await and you want to do that with buff heavy champions such as Hulkling, Angela, Odin, or any other cosmics with Odin's pre fight, so on and so forth. More buffs, the better, because the incinerates will be more potent. And every time you take a hit in your block or evade an attack uh, from your opponent, you will place a passive incinerate on them, and opponents will kind of melt themselves. It might take a bit of getting used to, but uh, it does play around the tenacity, because otherwise it makes fights quite tri tricky. And incinerate vulnerability obviously is going to improve that as well. So most of this lane you will kind of spend in one corner just blocking and awaiting for most part. And uh, you will clear the path relatively quickly. Moving on, uh, we have this Punishment Glutton Haunted Path. Now, I personally made this path harder for myself than it should have been. Because I chose to ramp up Aegon here and then have easier fight against the boss. Which is kind of what I recommend. Because against Haunted you need to kind of skill your way through anyways yes you can use other champions uh, that would benefit more from punishment glutton even though Aegon does have that bleed so you can use level twos and still get some furies there as well but obviously bringing in stuff like blade or nick fury or mole man or what have you would uh, be easier time clearing this path because the entire point is that you still need to skill your way through Haunted, so you need to be very careful as to when opponent is dashing back. If they do dash back, then just kind of stand your ground, parry, and, you know, wait it out for most part. You, there is no champion really that kind of, like, destroys this because of that damage reflection um, mechanic that Haunted has. So if opponent is faltered, you do not want to put damage or time effect on them, and you do not want to... You know be able to inflict damage on them anyways other than that there's nothing too crazy on this lane you just need to make sure that you're not using energy damage champions and uh yeah skill champions that inflict you know your bleeds and your poisons and whatnot will ramp up here quicker again i personally use this path to ramp up Aegon, and i pretty much use Aegon for like all of the fights i believe or most of the fights anyways and uh you can again ramp up Aegon on a couple of the fights here uh at the beginning, I do recommend bringing in Proxima Synergy as well for Aegon to make it easier in case you do mess up. And then the rest of the champions, yeah, you have your Nick Furies, Molemans, Black Panthers, Hitmonkeys, what have you. And uh, that is about it. 
So in this path number three is a tactical skateboard path. And this one is again one of those. Uh, basically, whenever the defender strikes the attacker or hits into the block, they gain a cruelty passive for each armor buff or passive they already have. And then obviously you're gonna have a chance to steal this. So this path is made for armor up champions, basically. In order to disarm this node, you need to dodge a hit of their special attacks, and then you need to use your special one to knock them down. At which point, whenever you hit them, you will be starting to gain these cruelty passives and have guaranteed crits. So you want to use champ. And there is kinetic transference, which is the additional thing to note out that the opponent will be gaining a chunk of power whenever you do parry. But in general, just use your Nimrod, the Meg Sentinels, Howard the Ducks, uh, whatever other tech champions, Warlock, and what have you. Any tech champions, well, any armor up champions basically will do quite fine here as you will have access to those guaranteed crits and cruelty passive letting you do more and more damage it is quite fun lane i had a bit of fun with like seal warrior and omega sentinel so and so forth so once you get used to it it's not that bad so the most important thing is don't let uh opponent build up armor ups with aggression armor otherwise you will end up taking a lot of block damage before you are able to disable the weapon node again Push opponent to a special attack that you can dex a hit from. Dex a hit, disable the weapon node, then use a level 1, and then just start nuking stuff down. Very fun. That is quite fun node. Now, here we go. Uh, the next one is Escalating Assault Immovable Object High Energy Diet Science Wrath. So it's science champion path, but here is one kind of important point. You are meant to benefit from immovable object node, which lets you get these um, steadfast buffs that let you easier manage opponents becoming unblockable, which they will as a result of escalating assault. So that is the long way of saying you do not want to bring in buff immune science champions, ideally. So because of high energy diet, you're largely looking at high bomb, scorpion, anti venom, Mr. Fantastic. Or in general, science champions that do not rely on energy damage and are not buff immune. So again, your Scorpion, your Anti Venom, your Mr. Fantastic, um, so on and so forth. Uh, I Bomb will do great here. What else we have? You know, Hulk. Why not? Hulk is definitely going to do just fine. And then we can move on in the next lane. Oh, additionally, if you want, you can also ramp up your A-gun here on the rocket fight, because rocket is quite easy to fight and relatively small health pool, and uh, you will have to work around that unblockable, but if you ramp up your A-gun, you will have easier time. So other than that, there's nothing really stopping from using A-gun for this one fight to ramp him up at least slightly, especially considering that it's relatively easy opponent. So yeah, I do recommend ramping up A-gun there on rocket. And this next lane is a kind of cheesy one for Sunspot and Toad specifically, but you also can take advantage of it to ramp up Aegon against this Red Hulk. That is what I personally did. Again, makes the fight longer, but you can easily bring in your Proxima Aegon and just ramp him up here. You can solo this fight uh, without too much trouble. And then for rest of the lane, it's basically Sunspot Toad, probably Captain Britain, some other mutants that inflict debuffs. The entire point is that whenever the mutant attacker applies a debuff to the defender, you have a chance to gain indefinite Travis buff, increasing your special attack damage by 30% until your next special attack. There is Ebb and Flow Knockdown, which actually kind of synergizes quite well with Sunspot and Toad as well, especially against skill champions. Then Roll with the Punches just means that you need to have access to Travis effects. Down and out means you can't heavy without using special attacks, but you know, you can just play around it. But yeah, definite recommendations here would be Sunspot and Toad specifically. Obviously, there are other uh, mutants that can benefit relatively well from this stuff, uh, like, you know, Apoc and Bishop and, uh, you know, some of the Wolverines. But by far the best champions uh, here are Sunspot and Toad. Rank 3 Sunspot basically just nuke down all the fights in like under a minute or within a minute. And this final lane is a mystic uh, cheese type of situation. 
where we have from zero to hero where every 15 seconds defender gains indestructible buff and unblockable buff for five seconds and they are paused if you are not close to the attacker and uh, but they are buffs that are able of being nullified there's also supercharge that's additional buff that you can nullify whenever the defender activates special attack they pause all of their buffs which doesn't really matter because you're going to be nullifying all of them and we have mystic ascendancy increasing the damage from mystic champions so absorbing man is going to do amazing here symbiote supreme is going to do great long shot is going to be phenomenal here as will doom claire and your you know most typical mystic champions i would say uh so yeah it's kind of like a relatively cheesy path as well because most of the defenders get a buff heavy so you can imagine how good of a time you will have with like long shot because you know king Groot consistently gains buffs over the duck does as well so the storm so there's Hercules, so there's um, uh, Red Skull, and to top it all off, they put Null as the final fight there, and that's just a paradise for Absorbing Man. So again, just your top Mystic Champions here, basically, and uh, that's what you want to do. And the final boss fight, again, it's Behemoth. Uh, obviously, he does have some nodes that, you know, adjust. The one that uh, a lot of people are kind of worried about is the Heal Sponge node, wherever he basically typhons whatever willpower healing you have and then increases that by 1000 percent of that but realistically i just ignored it like i used kingpin for this node and that just out damage it you you don't need to take off your willpower you don't need to do anything special if you're fighting the fight properly you will out damage it without problems unstoppable volatility just remember that you need knock them down in order to make them permanent make the volatility charge permanent and superior crit resistance is probably the most annoying one. I personally used Chang Chi for this fight and kind of relied on his level 2's guaranteed hits. And it was kind of an interesting interaction because level 2's did not have guaranteed crits and it was a bit of a longer fight. But Chang Chi has an extremely easy time uh, getting the volatility charges by, you know, purifying all the debuffs and everything else. And the level 2 still managed to crit a fair amount. So my personal recommendation is either just kind of like slug it through with Kingpin as is. Or, or go for Shang-Chi because you will still get some crits in there. And uh, that is about it for the final quest. And means we have gone through all of Act 8.2. So again, here is a brief write-up. So Inferno, X-Gene, Buff Heavy Champions, Angela, Odin, Hulkling, you know, Galen, what have you. And effectively just... Push opponent to one bar of power, dodge that, get yourself in a corner, dex once, and then just start blocking and dexing, and opponent's gonna melt. Counted, I use it as a gun ramp path, but easier time will be with Nick, Black Panther, Mole Man, Monkey, so on and so forth. Tactical skateboard, armor up champions will have great time. As long as you have at least one armor up, you're gonna do just fine. Science Wrath, again, none buff immune science champions will do best overall you can use rocket to ramp up your a gun but yeah anti-venom mr fantastic void piggy scorpion eye bomb will do just fine mutant mastery can wrap up a gun on red hulk and then use toad sunspot havoc or what have you there and then from zero to hero just your mystic new lane and best counters for the boss and that is it i'm not gonna keep you guys any longer i hope you guys found this uh, useful and if you did hit that like button hit that sub button hit all the good buttons and i will catch you guys soon see you. bye hello there guys and welcome back to the channel so we have all the information 